Hello everyone, and welcome to this video on loading raster data into EarthSci. EarthSci has been built using GDAL. GDAL is the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. It handles the reading, loading, manipulation, and writing of geospatial data. Because EarthSci is built with GDAL, it will load most of GDAL's supported formats. There are a couple of exceptions to this, such as NetCDF, which is a complex format which will contain multiple images. With EarthSci, we recommend that you use simpler formats that only contain single images, such as GeoTIFF. If you do have some data that you're not sure will work in EarthSci, you can use GDAL to convert that data to a simpler format. You will also have to use a gridded image format. Gridded XYZ simply won't work. Another thing is that the file has to have its own spatial reference. If you need to, you can also use GDAL to spatially reference your file. All of the data that is in EarthSci is in WGS84. If you load data into EarthSci that isn't in WGS84, it will be reprojected on the fly. If you have any problems loading your data into EarthSci, or it is a little slow to load up your data, you can try reprojecting your data to WGS84. Use code EPSG4326. So you can follow along. I have downloaded the Great Barrier Reef DEM from deepreef.org. I have downloaded this as a Esri raster bathymetry grid. The data is freely available from Deep Reef Explorer. Unzipping the file I downloaded gave me this folder. I then used GDAL to create a color map and a few hill shades. These are RGB image maps, which will go straight into EarthSci. Now the data that we have downloaded is a height map. It is a series of values that depict a distance from sea level. GDAL is quite happy to read an Esri grid as long as you know which file to point it at. In the GBR100 folder, I am going to find a W001001 file. I'm going to select that and drag it straight into EarthSci. Once it's read the file, it brings up a wizard. The wizard asks if you want to load it as a tiled imagery or elevation layer, or if you want to load it as a 3D model from raster. If you choose 3D model from raster, it will create a surface independent of the globe using the raster as a height map. However, I'm going to choose tiled imagery elevation layer to get it to load the DEM as a displacement layer for the globe. Now that it has loaded in this DEM, I don't see an immediate change in the globe. This is because it's displaced the globe, and I'm going to have to zoom into the Great Barrier Reef, getting quite close to the surface in order to see some differences. So as I get up to the surface, I can actually see that the reef is quite detailed. And if I toggle the dem off and on, you can see that the surface changes, showing that the dem has actually loaded in. Something a little bit easier to see is a color map. I can come back to my folder and grab one of the previously generated color maps, in this case the color ramp, where I used GDAL to produce an image that was brown on the mountains, white on the coast, and dark blue in the ocean depth. I can load that the same way by dragging it straight into EarthSci, and then choosing Tiled Imagery Elevation Layer again. And because this is an RGB map, once that's loaded in, it will drape it straight down onto the surface of the globe. And so there we have the colored map draped over the globe. As you can see, getting data into EarthSci can be as simple as drag and drop, so long as you have the correct spatial reference. If you're a keen developer, EarthSci does have some extra functionality. It will allow you to produce a colored map or a hillshade on the fly. However, this functionality is not yet exposed in the interface. For more information about that, head over to our GitHub page. Thanks for watching this video on getting raster data into EarthSci.